Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Code You True. So today we'll be diving into the wonderful world of functions in Python. Whether you are just starting out or you are looking to refine your skills in Python, learning function is a good start. And by the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to write Python functions in Python just like a pro developer. So what are functions? Functions are a reusable block of code designed to perform a specific task. Just think of them as a mini program within your program. Instead of writing this same code repeatedly, you can simply call a function whenever you need it. This makes your code cleaner, easier to read, and more efficient. Why should you use functions in the first place? The first reason is usability. Once you write it once, you can use this function many times without taking extra lines of code or taking the same lines of code you used to define the function in the first place. Modularity. Break down complex problems into smaller parts. So when you have function like complex program, you can just break them into smaller parts and pull these smaller solutions in functions itself. So this will make your code more easier to understand and just make it clearer to you yourself as a programmer. Then the other one is maintainability. So you'll be able to maintain your code, you'll be able to debug your code easy, like easily and update the code easily. So it, you'll be able to upload a specific part of this code, it's just like a car now, you'll be able to like, okay, work on any part of the car that is faulty because you define them in function. You know the wheels is for movement and you know that the, yes, the chair is for sitting. So, and this will help you to improve collaboration. You can be able to share your code easily with others and they can be able to improve your code for you. So, without further ado, let's get started and start defining functions. So, how do you define function in Python? So, in Python, we define function with this keyword called def. So, you can see this in short form of definition. So, we use this keyword called def. But first of all, in Python, function consists of a two parts and that's the function error and the function body. So the function header now consists of three parts of parts under it. So that is the def keyword is the first part on the function header, then followed by the function name itself. So let's say I'm defining a function now called grid, right? My function name now is called grid. It's called grid. And now the next part of the function header is parameters, and this is enclosed in parentheses. So if I want to put in a pra some parameters to this function, I'll put them right here, but I won't be using a parameter right now. We just leave it without a parameter. And the function header now is ended with a column. So whenever you're done with the function header, you end it with a column. So going to the function body now, the function body contains the statement that is defined, that defined to perform the specific tasks we want. So all the code, the statement of codes you want to perform that specific task is going to be under the function, is going to be in the function body. So when you just go under here, you can see this is indexed automatically by PyCharm. So you can just go here and say hello world. So I'm just going here now, I'm creating hello. So yes, this is just function in Python. You can see this is function in Python. If this is your first time writing function in Python, congratulations, you've written your first function in Python. So how do you call this function in Python? Now all you need to do is to use this function name as an identifier to call this function. I can just go ahead and say, okay, great now. So I just say, okay, great now. Okay, sorry about that, great now. Now, if I run this code, I am calling this function in Python. So now you can see that now we are getting a word outside. So if I just run this multiple times, you can see I'm still getting the same thing outside, but just multiple times. Now I'm getting a word twice in Python. So talking about parameters now, you can see from PyCharm is telling us that we have two usage for this function. So now you can say, let's say you want to spread, you want to like personalize this greeting to the user. So you can just say input this parameter called name here. So this is called parameter here. So this um this is a way whereby you want this function to be used dyna dynamically based on the value you specify outside the function. So I can just go here and say hello, then let me use the formatted string right here. This will be name, then formatted string just by putting F outside here. So I'm referencing this parameter here called name. So it can just be hello and whatever name I put into that place. So let's just comment this other function out there. And for this place now, let's put in Andrew as the name. So you can try and guess what you're going to get as the output here, right here. It must, if you have guessed, it's an hello Andrew, you are very right. So that's Andrew right here. We're getting hello Andrew outside there. So I can just go ahead and run this again by specifying specifying another name right here. So I can just say Paul instead now. 
So if I should go ahead and run this now, we are getting hello Andrew, hello Paul. So this is how you use parameter in Python. In Python, and if it's still looking a bit, if you're not understanding this in a way, don't worry, we are getting them. You will get to understand this more and more in very soon. So this now is a parameter in Python. And that's it. So the next thing we'll be talking about now in Python is called arguments, right? So, but before we go to before we're talking about arguments, let's quickly talk about returning values in Python. So let's say I have another function here called dev sum numbers. Okay, so I want to get the sum of different numbers right here now. And I want to return this value here. I don't want to print them out, but I want to get this value and be able to do something with it, right? So Let's just say I have okay. What I just want to do now is use this keyword return to plus three. So if I should go ahead and run some numbers, right? So let's run this now. We are not getting anything at the terminal, right? But if I'm using print instead of return right here, it's being printed at the terminal. So I'll just change this back to return now and let me show you something right here. So if I should go ahead and print out this function itself print out i was calling out this function itself so just going to go around this right now so we are still getting five back right and why are we getting five back it's because we are returning five here so the thing is that you can still store this value in a variable right here now so you can just say that okay some no right here so i'm storing this value right here what it is returning as a sum no as this variable sum no and right here i am printing out some no so just go ahead and run this again you are still getting five so now you can see this work quite all right so now let's talk about argument in function and what are argument what do you mean by argument so you can call a function now you can pass an argument to any types of this function and we have four types of arguments so the first type of argument right there is the required argument and the second type of argument is keyword argument then we have the default argument and we have the variable length argument so what we mean by all these type of arguments the required argument now are the arguments that are passed into a function in correct positional order this means this argument you pass into this function they must be in correct positional order so using the same sum numbers here you want to pass an argument into this function now into this this thing now just by putting in the parameters right here and now they are returned in order so i can just say a plus b and right here, so if I should enter three and four right here, you can see now partial is telling us that a is equal to three and b is equal to four. Why this? This is because Python, Python will never give four to a and three to b because in the argument right here, a come before b. So the first value right there is going to be assigned to a and b come before four. And the first value right there is going to be assigned to four, right? So I can just okay, where well, there are um, return a and b instead just like this so if i should go ahead and run this so now we are getting a top here of three and four and you can see now three comes before four so it's going to be in specific order so this is what we call required argument number of arguments now they are called exactly with how the function is defined it's going to be positional with how the function is defined so that's what you should know about required argument for more example of this now i'm going to just extend this and use print instead okay now so let's just say print out so what i want to do now is i want to print out a right i want to print out a is equals to what am i doing a right here okay and let's just end this space because we don't want it to go on a new line to print this so just copy this and paste it okay three times now then i'm adding a third variable here this third variable will be c instead now so i mean setting this to be b and this to be c so this is how this is but now how do we test if this function the order of this function so what we can just write here is go ahead and call this function itself or we can just all we just do is call some numbers and now we enter three four and five then now we call some numbers again I want to okay x y and z so if i should run this code right here okay this should be a string sorry about that so if i should go ahead and run this code again 
So now we are getting right here. Yeah, let me just start this on a new line. We we'll just run this one more time. So see what we are getting right here now. We have a is equal to three. That's because three is coming first, and a is the first argument right here. B is equal to four, and C is equal to five. And same thing is applicable to x, y, and z, right here. So this is all God. This is all God require argument in Python. So let's go to the second type of argument in Python. This is called keyword argument. And why do we call this keyword argument? This is called keyword argument because this allow you to skip any variable if you don't want to follow them in order. Because position argument now you have to be follow them in order. But using keyword argument now, you can just call any variable you want and follow this variable any how you any how you want this variable to go. So instead of me making account, we can see before now a is equal to three. I can just decide to say I want b to be equal to three and I want a to be equal to four. And now I want okay c is to be equal to five. So as you go ahead and run this, and I'll say that a is equal to 4, even if 4 was defined, uh, it was coming second on the argument we have here, but a is equal to 4. That's because we use the keyword argument. We are specifying these keywords and we are assigning value to them when we are calling the function. This is how you use the keyword argument. So now let's talk about, okay, we can see that this a is equal to x, b is equal to y, and c is equal to z maintain their numbers they are missing maintain their position i mean the same way they were defined in the function so let's talk about default arguments now what do you mean by default arguments so a default argument is just an argument that assumes a default value if a value is not provided when the function is called for that argument so if i should give a a default value of two just by assigning a why i'm defining the function and the function exact right here equals to two but note one thing, a default argument must be a trailing argument. No default argument should come first in Python. So for that case now, we are going to use C as our default argument instead. So if I should automatically set C to 2 right here. Now if I should run this again, it will still be working quite alright. We give them the same thing, C is 5 and C is 0 as expected. But let's say if I should remove the specification of C right there, what are we still going to be getting right here? Now we are getting C as 2, even if we did not specify the value for C when we call the function right here. This is because the C has been defined as a default value, as a default argument when we are defining the function. So this is how default arguments work. And the last but not the least, which is the variable length argument. This is very, this is a very wonderful feature that Python function has. And this just a pew. To like define the variables that you didn't plan for initially when you're writing this code so sometimes you need to design a function that can take more arguments than you specified while defining the function so now this argument now can call like a variable length argument and okay this argument are called variable length argument and they are not named in the function definition unlike the cases that is required for required argument and default argument these are not named in the function argument so what we do here is we use an asterisk to have a variable name for all these values that is going to come after this. So let's say we have a, b now, and we want to have a default argument right here. We can just go and say that we want to have variable length arguments. So we can just say variable x right here. So here now we have opportunity to have more arguments to this thing. To this variable length argument here so i can just go ahead and say okay i'm having four five six seven right here then i like to use position argument right here and now we see that automatically this argument right here has been assigned as they assign to this var argument so what i can just do right here in this function is to loop through these arguments i just say for var in okay in var argument right here and I can print out this argument. Print out val instead. So if I should go ahead and run this now, what are we going to get? Let's check that out. Now you can see, okay, I have my a equals to 3 and my b is equals to 4. And now after that, we are getting 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we can see that this 
are still useful so for this specific function called num numbers right here so i'll just sum numbers right here if we want to sum all the numbers we input into this into this input as an argument to this function how do we go about that how we go about that it's just specifically like saying that okay we want all the values to just collect as many as possible argument and we want to define a variable right here called sum and set this sum to zero at default then for var in var argument we want to add vars we want to increment the number of sum so that will be sum plus equal var so at the end of all this we can now print out sum equals sum so this is very useful in this case now we can see that in this case we are going to sum up all these numbers so before we run this so let's run sum it up this is 8 11 16 okay 24 then 31 okay let's run this oh 29 so okay 8 11 16 22 29 so now we can see that we are getting the sum of all these values so i can just add more to this and if i should run this code again it's working quite all right and okay one thing i should tell you about function is that function we have two classification of function we have the user defined function and we have the inbuilt function so input function are the function that are inbuilt into this into python itself they are input into python itself by the user um, by the programmers who develop python programming language then user defined functions are the functions that are defined by the user so some numbers now is a function that is defined by the user so uh, an example of input function that can do this exact same thing is called sum so i should just go ahead and say sum right here and just makes this a list instead i guess and run this now it was 51 previously okay okay i need to print this out so you can see you can see we are getting 51 this function is inbuilt but this function is user defined because we define it ourselves and that function is inbuilt itself